Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Lately, I've been sucked into a debate on which is better, Coke or Pepsi. Some people say Coke is better and other people say Pepsi is better. They're both clearly very different kinds of people. Now personally, I can say that I've had Coke more often than Pepsi, but my favorite drink is a Pepsi product, so I don't know what I can say that I like better. Pressure is the episode where Spongebob and Sandy compete with each other to see if land creatures or sea creatures are better. This episode aired on March 8, 2001 and is also known as the episode where we see local seagulls get beat up by Sandy Cheeks. This episode also marks the beginning of a couple minor recurring themes throughout the series, such as the first time Sandy's helmet is removed and broken in some way, and where we actually see characters on Bikini Atoll. Neither of these are huge plot points that happen again in the future, but they have been seen in the series after this at least a couple times. Something that's a bit more common is seeing the characters above the actual ocean, which is definitely more of a reoccurring theme throughout the series. You can make the argument that it did or didn't start with this episode, as Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy all left Bikini Bottom for the moon in some way in episode 16, Sandy's Rocket from season 1. But this episode has going above water as a much bigger plot point, in my opinion. And here, we see the actual dry land up close. Sure, the actual land doesn't get a lot of focus or screen time, but when I was younger, this was the first episode I saw where the characters actually went to the surface, let alone the Bikini Atoll Island. However, this is the first time where the characters were shown above water as live action versions. Yes, Spongebob and Patrick were shown as a live action sponge and starfish in episode 3, Tea at the Tree Dome, but the key words in my last sentence were above water. That may not be too important, but I always love seeing the characters go above water, whether they were shown in their animated forms or as live action forms. And now with that established, let's watch this episode and check out when they go to Bikini Atoll. So the episode starts up and the title card music is so awesome. Spongebob and Sandy were laying down relaxing, looking at the clouds that all look like flowers. Spongebob and Sandy talk about potentially racing to the top of Coral Cliffs, and they both say that they would win anyway. When they realize they said this, Spongebob and Sandy each explain how they have their own advantages from being either land creatures or sea creatures. But while Spongebob was talking, Sandy got a head start and pushed rocks down on Spongebob. Spongebob had an umbrella, but Sandy still beat him to the top. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Spongebob got mad and challenged Sandy to a race to the Krusty Krab, and while Sandy was talking, Spongebob got a head start. Sandy overtook Spongebob, but Spongebob still beat her to the Krusty Krab. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Sandy got mad at Spongebob winning, and they started to call each other insulting names, and Sandy soon starts to claim that land creatures are better. Then Patrick shows up, followed by Squidward. Oh, thank God. We haven't seen Squidward for the last six episodes in a row. And she started to say what land creatures were better at. And Mr. Krabs comes up too and joins in on the debate. Squidward brings up drowning, and the characters all laugh. Squirrels can do anything they want to. The characters start to challenge Sandy by doing things they can do, including this. <laughs> So, I can do that. <laughs> Sandy retaliated by claiming that she doesn't want to do anything Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs just did. That's the loophole. Spongebob and the others started laughing at Sandy, and she got so infuriated that she took off her spacesuit and even her helmet, much to everybody's shock. The others were impressed, but of course, it didn't take long until she started to feel lightheaded, and right before she drowned, she put a pickle jar on her head as a temporary helmet. There was no water in that? The others laughed at her and claimed that sea creatures were superior. Sandy decided to even the score by having them go up to the surface world where she has the upper hand and stay there for one whole minute. Spongebob and the others were confident this would be fine, but started to get nervous when they arrived at the shore of Bikini Atoll. Sandy reminded them of their deal and claimed that if they lost, that would prove that land creatures were better than sea creatures. Spongebob and the others decided to take on her challenge despite being nervous. Spongebob went first and the live action sponge found that he was actually enjoying it. Patrick jumped up too, followed by Mr. Krabs, who shouldn't have problems with going ashore because he's amphibious. And then Squidward comes up looking completely different. 
Everybody found themselves finding the challenge easy, and then they ran into a seagull. Meanwhile, Sandy was impressed that they stayed above water for a whole minute and went to congratulate them. When the live-action squirrel made it above the water, she found the two seagulls trying to eat SpongeBob, Patrick Squirt, and Mr. Krabs, so she attacked the seagulls and saved her friends. When they went back underwater, SpongeBob and Sandy realized that both sides are equal in being good at something, but not everything, and they apologize. They all cheer for being sorry for themselves, including the defeated seagulls, and the episode ends. Damn, if people can cheer for being sorry for themselves, then maybe that'll help me. Hmm. Eh, probably not. So that was Pressure, and I think it's a pretty good episode. This was another episode I always wanted to see on TV a lot before I owned the official Season 2 DVD, so I got some nostalgia for this. But I won't let nostalgia blind me for giving it a critical look. And with that mindset, I feel like this episode is rather simple and kinda slow paced. Obviously that doesn't mean it's bad, not at all. There are a lot of funny sequences and great character moments throughout the episode. But in terms of the action, I feel like there's hardly any at all. And when it does happen, it's very short lived, like the two races at the beginning of the episode and the part where the seagulls are attacking the sea creatures. They are great moments, but it also kind of feels like there aren't a lot of scenes like that. And hell, even when Sandy beats up the seagulls to save the others, we don't get to see that, not even in the form of a dust cloud brawl. I feel that, at the very least, could have added to this scene a bit more. The majority of the episode is just Spongebob, Patrick Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and Sandy arguing with each other. I do like a lot of the banter from these scenes, but it's definitely a lot slower than a lot of other episodes from this season. Now of course, I'm not trying to downplay for the funny moments because there are a lot of those scenes in this episode. I always love the races Spongebob and Sandy have and how they both get a head start and win despite the other's efforts to catch up. It's also funny seeing the sea creatures do what they can do and tease Sandy for not being able to do those things. The banter is also hilarious, like Squidward's line about pickle jars. Do we have to wear pickle jars? And Spongebob's old man impression after the second race against Sandy. There's a ton of funny gags too, like when Patrick eats the Krabby Double Deluxe in one bite, Sandy grabbing another one out of nowhere and it hits her helmet. And of course, I love the record player joke too. I also like how everybody stays silent for a few seconds when Squidward comes to the surface and when Spongebob freezes in the air waiting for a high five from Squidward and then falls. Patrick of course has the best jokes here. In addition to the Krabby Double Deluxe, there's also the airhead gag, the part where he cannonball jumps up to the surface, and when he drops his popcorn and eats it like a chicken. I also think all the characters are really strong here. It's fun when they stray away from the typical tropes and switch things up. I also love how savage everybody is here. Like when Sandy's about to die and the others are reminding her of breathing and laugh when she saves her life. The parts at the beginning with Spongebob and Sandy are nice when they're just relaxing before they start their races, and the end where they apologize and level the playing field. I loved getting to see the characters as live action puppets when they went on the surface. In retrospect, I do admit it's a bit strange, like how the characters don't have their clothes after going to the surface, how Sandy's body looks like it has a washcloth texture, and that they were shown as stick figure puppets of all things. I won't deny that it's charming though, and that's why I think this in particular stuck with people when the characters went above water. Not to say the other times we see the characters as realistic forms are bad, but I think there's a reason why people talk about this scene the most from this episode. Even though I think this episode is simple, that's not a bad thing. Episode 33, The Paper from Season 1 is also basic, but I also said that that episode is a prime example of how something basic like that can be a great representation of what the show is all about. That episode is about Spongebob making a simple piece of paper seem like the most fun thing on the planet, and it perfectly shows what Spongebob's character is all about. This episode is also kind of basic, but I think this episode is also good, but for different reasons compared to the paper. Even though there are only 5 characters throughout, not counting the seagulls, there is still a lot of funny dialogue and hilarious gags, and that is something the show also does really well for the most part. 
While the paper is an amazing showcase of the most pure spirit of the show imaginable, I feel that the awesome banter between all the characters in this episode show that even some of the most basic of stuff can be funny and not everything needs to be action packed to keep the viewer's attention. Sometimes to get a good laugh, all that's really needed is just some cleverly written dialogue and I feel that this episode is a great example of just that. There may not be a ton of action, but there's a lot of funny banter between the characters and sometimes that's all that's really needed for a fun time. We may not get episodes like this in the series nowadays and I think that it would be great if we saw something a bit more basic like this every so often in the show. I've always loved the back and forth between the characters and I think this episode should be thought of as something like that. Just a fun, simple episode with a minimalist cast of characters that's written very well and that's good for being just that. Pressure is a good episode with so many funny scenes and awesome character moments. There may be a bit less action in this one, but I think there should be a bit of a slower episode every now and then because it's a nice change of pace in my opinion and it means that it's just as good but for different reasons. And I think that this episode is a great example of not everything, not just within Spongebob but in general as well, needs to be super fast paced and over the top. This is a bit slower, but it's still funny and charming, and I think that's all that really matters in this case. But going back to the topic of the Coke and Pepsi debate, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pick a side. But that's fine too. It's just a debate, so what? So I might feel sorry for myself for not being able to pick a side, but at least you can cheer for being sorry for yourself. And if anybody out there knows how to do that, please tell me how because I am severely lacking the ability to be able to do that.